the line. A weird and intriguing piece of architecture that's undoubtedly going to shock us all once built. You know what? Let's take that concept and inject it straight into Manor Lord, shall we? And so it's time to put that concept to good use. Welcome yourselves in, guys. We are going to plan out the roads and make what we have. Oh my god, this is lucky. We are going to make ourselves the wonderful line. So we have the King's Road here and here. Now, staying true to this, we're only allowed to build on the one line. Now, I'm going to use probably the attachment of this and just run it straight through to kind of match up with this here. So there is the line. We'll zoom out. <laughs> that is our line to build on. Nowhere else are we allowed to build. That is it. All right, let's get this moving. And so it begins the line. Welcome yourselves in, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I've got this really cool idea. I was t uh, I was umming and ahhing between this and the future city they're attempting to build in Canada, I believe it is. I can't remember the name of it. But we've, we've settled on the line because we thought this would be a really cool concept. So the rules are we're not allowed to build any building away from this line. It has to be built on here, nowhere else. And that is pretty much it. So we're going to see how efficient and how well you can actually build based on that. We've gone with a random start. We don't know where we are. And all I've done is gone ahead and put the logging camp, the storehouse, the granary. And that is pretty much it. And a, and a new hitching post. And we'll get a nice... Well, we're quite lucky because we've got most things already on. But I am going to plow through and speed it up. We're going to go from there and also get a food source in. We've got a good choice here. So I'm going to get both the hunting camp and the foragers when we can as well. So we'll probably set that higher priority so they do that one after. All right, logging camp is finished. We're going to get everyone in there real quick. I'm going to just plow through this and get the real initial starting point up. Guys, thank you for being here as well. Just by clicking on the video, you mean the world to me. So thank you so much. Just a little thumbs up. Works massively. Right, hunting camp is done. We're going to assign one to that. And I'm also going to change that to let them say, you're not allowed to go below 15 in the hunting here. So we're actually in a good position to just go with berries for a long, long time here. And I'm actually going to do that. I think I'm even going to put the point in the double berry here. So we can actually double capacity of all berry deposits. So I want to try something different this time. And I haven't really gone into any of these ones at all. So all we've ever done really is you get rush trade. And then maybe one of these guys, but I don't know. I haven't looked at farming for this zone. Emma Fertility, yeah, we've got a bit over there, but that's going to be a long way to walk if we're not allowed to build off the line here. And I think that includes farms too, so we're not allowed to build the farms off the line. I think that's a fair rule as well. So it is what it is. Let's get our first one. So what we're going to have to do with housing is make sure we do little marketplaces, I think. So first one's going to be... What is that? That's the well. I reckon we can pop it. There we go. We're going to get three in there on our first marketplace. And then we're going to start the burgages when we can as well. So these are going to be double plots. Nice and easy. Double plots, I think, is sensible. Let's turn the snapping back on. And there we have it. We're going to go for a few of these. Sometimes it doesn't play ball. We're zoomed in. So I'll take that one down. There we go. Let's go for two, two doubles there. Maybe... One over here when the camp moves as well. I could probably get it over here. But that's fine. We'll leave those going. Let's speed it up. Let's get it through. Hopefully we're getting in a little bit of meat. We are. And we're starting to get the hides in now as well. And there's the first food stall. Now I will be reassigning that hunter with the food stall to the granary when it's built. And the reason you want to do it. Let me just quickly explain that. Is you want the granary workers to be the ones that open the marketplace. Because they can carry more. So here's what we're going to do. You go into people. And you reassign to the granary. And that should. Sometimes it abandons it. Yep, it abandoned it. That's fine. Let's get him to move that food over and rebuild it. Let's get one in there as well. And there we go. New food stall done. So that should be from the granary now. And they'll stock up that bread. And then I'll get one more back in the hunting camp. And we'll be good to go. All right, we're going to have a slightly larger market. No, that's too big. Let's go. I want it the same length almost. I'm just getting a prep in another market. That one's good have another one there so we'll have a tiny one in here just to kind of work with to get it going so they can do the probably firewood and fuel perfect that's exactly what we want for when the houses get built we are so good for food 
for so long you do not even realize it's pretty crazy so what we're going to do is make sure we set the work area of these to be just here i'll probably be planting these pretty quickly so we'll go something like that we'll just enjoy it one month has gone already so it soon goes quick i've kind of mastered the game now i'll be honest so i can run it through pretty quickly i don't know how long this series will be but if you want it to carry on obviously let me know and let it be known that you are really really looking forward to see when how this one turns out it's going to be interesting and obviously we are allowed to expand past this point here so where is the road if i just click on there i'm allowed to bring the line up to there so that should be it yep that's fine that is the build line that looks so stupid <laughs> i love it anyway we're gonna spend a little bit of that money and we're gonna order our second ox in now we're gonna tr probably to be fair not even gonna trade that early on i think we should be okay a lot of it's just gonna be building up the housing and getting a veggie garden in so we're gonna have berries meat and bread for the first year anyway so we don't need to worry too much the market distribution will be pretty good for that so let's just take a look here as soon as the houses come in and here we go first burgage plot is done families will start to come in now i'm gonna upgrade to fit another one in and to be fair i can probably go ahead and get another one just on the other side of this as well should be fine we're gonna want some smaller ones nearby so i think i'll have a smaller uh, i guess we won't worry about that yet let's go for the the, the larger ones at the moment and then maybe in this little section when I can. I'll probably do it here. This one's going to be just a small singular. And that's going to be for when we get artisans. So we only want one family working on the likes of uh, shields and stuff. So where's our stone? we got 140 stone there. 204 clay and 136 iron. It's not the best. These two are pretty strong though. I won't lie about that. But family members are coming in now as we build the houses in. That's perfect. And in here we're going to get our first veggie garden. So these two are going to be veggie gardens off the off the bat anyway we're going to slowly build up our food reserves so we don't need to worry about it and so it begins the start of the beautiful settlement you really have to if you're going to play this game just absorb it as things build it's the most important thing to do guys honestly just take it all in soak in the beauty that manor lords has just watch them build too it's really really cute Oh man, it's just too good. Get that built though. <laughs> Look at them doing their first bit of gardening as well, which is awesome. So we're almost all housed. We've got space for everyone now as well, which is great. So yeah, as I say, this burgage plot here, so I can expand this one. This is going to be food for artisan when we have it. And I'm going to move this hitching post over here out of the way. So trading, if we're being sensible, should probably go somewhere down this end. We're going to want to replant at some point as well. But let's take a look at what we're doing here. So forager's hut as we're building nothing um although we want to get firewood in i think we're okay for a little bit we want to kind of ramp up stuff but we can get that in hopefully we get our first family in a moment and we can work on that so firewood then let's go near the storehouse i think that should be fine in here and planks can also go opposite but we'll prioritize the woodcutter's lodge first and hitching post has moved lovely and there we go. We should be okay. I kind of want to put... I think the church is going to go somewhere over here, I'll be honest. So I'm going to get the few more houses in along this front. Got to be careful how the markets are going to go. So let's try... I might get just another smaller one here. These are going to be our artisan buildings. We'll go with something like that. And then these ones can then be bigger ones again. Should be fine. Bandits are stealing my goods. There we go. Oh, I stole my bloody leather. You cheeky sods. We got enough anyway. If you're ever wondering if you want to get a quick um, boost on your production, by the way, just get the tannery down. I didn't do it, but what will happen is you can, if you can tan these first bits of leather from the hunting camp really, really early, you'll be in really, really good place. Because you can ramp this up to about 65% just from that. But yeah, as you can see, we've got the market food variety now. We've got the fuel going in. And there's our settlement level increase. So what do we want to do now? I've never done these ones. So doubles the amount of meat harvested by the hunters. And we've got the crown. So if we took this one and this one, we'd have a permanent. That's probably going to last our settlement up to about 300 pop. So 
it might be good to go into these. We could obviously stockpile berries massively. I think this one's probably going to be the one I go for, though. I'm not going to touch this. Not going to touch sheep this time around because sheep are wild. They go crazy. And I'm not even convinced we can do any farming. So let's... Oh, this is just too good, though. Uh, we can make money slowly. It's fine. Let's go into trapping. I like to do something different. I'm too relying on the trade. And it is the strongest one, but it is what it is, right? It's going to ask us to get the militia, so let's pop that in. Forming the militia. And we'll go make some money from the bandit camps anyway. It should be fine. I have no goal for this series, so let me know if you want to know, like, the couple of targets. We're playing on the normal difficulty and just having a bit of fun. Um, if there's a few goals you think would be a good idea to squeeze in, let me know. Um, I won't record any other than the first episode until that it's done, just to get your feedback from it. I think that's probably a sensible way to do it. So we have the 15. I'm going to get the second veggie garden in so it's done. We're not going to be able to trade. We can trade the basics like firewood or something. I'm going to actually rotate some people in and out as and when. Uh, in the winter, obviously, this will be gone. But I do want to stockpile this as much as possible. I want to be able to get the hides and stuff in. What I might do is dink off the hunter's camp and get the firewood. i tell you what. Yeah, let's get the firewood in real quick and then we'll start to get our planks ready for the church so if you're wondering the church requires 20 planks but there we go that gives us enough space to at least get us going doesn't it it's going to be incredible the beauty begins i think i'm going to remove this marketplace actually guys i've got a better idea i'm going to pop one in this section a slightly bigger one in here let's do that i think that's smart just because it's close to the storehouse and granary it makes a lot more sense so we're just waiting for August here. And we should be able to get them in then on this. So we didn't have anything good for the tannery. Tannery's finished now, so I'm going to tan this up. And once the wood cutting has been done a little bit, I'm going to pause that one and go for that. I might even be able to pause this one. Actually, let's pause the logging camp. And there's the clothing stall. So we're going to get that boosted as high as we can. Because what's going to happen is it will take that minus four from previous plus the previous. So we're starting to minus one. So we should hit 51% in next month. That'll be the first one. A little bit slower than I'd like to get one family in, but we're okay. And there we go. That clothing takes us up that extra now as well. So clothing should be in here. So we're getting leather in, food, fuel, and clothing all 100% for everyone that's living. So the reason why I don't have these as double plots, they're going to be artisans. You don't want to lose and um, work all your labors. You don't want them to disappear by upgrading them. So if I, it, it's sensible just to make smaller ones for those. Otherwise, they overproduce. All right, firewood, 10 months. Let's pause the woodcutter's lodge now. That is more than enough. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the saw pit now. I'm going to put a construction reserve in there. And we're going to work up 20 planks here to get the church. And just whilst we're doing this, I'm also going to start to set up the trade. I was just looking. The King's Roads, actually, this one here, is going to be our trade point right here. So going closer to this, it's going to make more sense. So we're going to go with that one there. That's going to be the trade post. Uh, it's incredible, man. I love it. There we go. Right, let's get in. Then we'll get our second, uh, our first family coming in. Sorry, in a moment. And there we go. The family is here. Hello. Hello, hello to our first family. How are my planks doing? They are so slow. Just cut the damn planks. So I'm going to permanently assign the livestock to the saw pit just to make it a little bit quicker. And we will upgrade this one whilst we wait. This is going to be important so I can get another one in when we've got the coin. So we'll have that ready and I don't need to worry about it. I know we don't have it at the moment, but we're not building a lot. So we'll leave an ox. Uh, we'll leave one permanently assigned in here. That should be fine. Don't worry about the bandits stealing stuff. And then we can get our last ones in. It'll make it a lot quicker. And I'm going to pop it in the trees here, I think. It's going to go... To be fair, I might even put it further down. We're, we're going to build quite far down. So let's go here, actually. Yeah, that'll look cool on the edge of that road, I think. And there we go. Church is placed. Beautiful. Right, we're going to need to get someone back in here now. So let's turn the logging camp back on. We're actually down to a few things here. So... Where's what's going on? I'm going to assign someone to the forager's hut. We don't care about the building just yet. How is this doing? That is fine. And let's go ahead and pause the tannery at the moment and the saw pit. Let's get this building done. And instead of the tannery, we're going to go into the storehouse to hopefully get the clothing store up and running. 
There we go. They're now a warehouse worker, so we should be fine. I'm going to leave those two in the storehouse. And I'm going to go without any builders for a moment just to get more be uh, meat and berries in. So we're going to have both of these running for a while before the winter. And we should be able to pick up quite a lot of berries in that time. It doesn't take them long at all, so we'll keep that going. And we're about to get a family anyway. And just whilst we wait for all that running around to do, I'm going to go into crafting materials. And we are going to go with export of some firewood slowly and slowly we're gonna let that one happen so we'll say 40 if we if we have any spare they'll sell them at the moment we've uh, we don't because we're not chopping any and i'm just gonna fill in this gap with another this one is probably gonna be ah uh, that can be a smaller one then no problem and as you can see we're already pretty high now with all of that going so every month we're gonna get at least the one family should get another one in a second there we go and with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Woodcutter's Lodge. So we're going to need to keep that one going now because we're coming into the winter and our fuel usage will double. Let's take a look at the food. So plenty of berries and plenty of meat. So the food stall, we should go out and grab a mixture of everything and work at that. So that one food stall should be enough for all of these for a little while. I'm going to keep the granary small and short. So if I click this, they should all be there. It's just going to take a moment to distribute across. But they will get there. They've got everything they need to get it across. So, And once I get enough people, so I'm going to wait for a couple more families. I'm going to go deal with those bandits because they keep robbing me blind. They keep robbing me blind. I'm going to put in... we got Marketplace there, so we can't do anything with that. I'm going to pop another house over here. So we're going to be working on some of the larger scale plots now. So I can utilize a big garden in there if I want around the back of that. And then we're going to have one more here just ready. That should be more than enough. And then I think over here we're going to have to get another marketplace maybe. It's going to be interesting because I'm not actually sure how many population. Maybe we play until the whole line is full. What do you think of that, guys? So <laughs> we're not allowed to end it until the line is full. I think that's cool. Look at this, though. Plenty coming in now. So we're actually stocking up enough. So once we've got one more family, we're going to be able to sell the surplus firewood in a moment when the traders come in as well so we just need to make sure we have someone spare for that i'm gonna put them in now because we're gonna get a new family in in a moment so i need to start making a little bit of cash and there we go the family's in anyway and then when we can one of these will get upgraded to a tier two once that church is complete and you'll see yep they got there in the end so everything has a lot of everything and then we're going to have a spare family once this berry deposit depletes as well. It won't take long, but that'll give us a stupid amount of food for a while. So we've got a year's supply of stuff in anyway, so we're happy. And let's check in. So firewood is ready to be sold. So what will happen now is we should see a trader, one right here. Hopefully they'll come across. There we go. Oh, so they're going across to that one as well. So we've got a trade point over here. So that's perfect. That works really well. And there we go. we got our first 11 in. Perfect. So the gold has started to be made that firewood's going to be able to be sold for a while so we're fine i will open up the trade route as soon as i can but what we want to do really is save this because if we're not putting our points into trade early on we're going to want to save money because it starts to get really costly to open up trade routes and the export rates are naff uh import rates sorry but i think we'll be fine without one of the only ones we're going to have to import is going to be probably beer and bread so We'll start those off early, but we're going to want to try and ramp up and sell a lot of these. So if I set this one up, that means more people will come and buy. I don't think we're going to need it yet. We could also do the same for planks. If I just say, let's always have 20 planks in, they will go ahead and top that one up as well when we turn it on. And I'm not sure whether to get myself a new ox in first or just save it a little bit. I might save it. We got the 31 though. I mean, we're going to make it pretty quick, I think. Yeah, it's coming in pretty quick from that firewood. So actually then, let's uh, let's get another one. And the new food stores are coming in now. Who is doing that? That is our forager. We don't necessarily want the forager to be doing that. So what we're going to do is reassign to the granary here. So their market stores are based on the granary rather than this. And then the forager's hut, we can put that on, but I'm actually going to pause the forager's hut now because it's the winter. They can't do anything. And we'll keep the second one in the granary. We want the marketplaces to always be ran by the granary workers, and that should be more than enough to keep us going. So we'll get these ones upgraded. So we're good. 
and we'll let the church get built out as well. So I'm trying to figure out how we're going to do this with granaries as well. So we'll probably have a granary and a storehouse somewhere over here with market um, a, a slightly bigger marketplace with it as well. These ones should serve this whole section for a while. Um, once the trees are cut down, I need to decide on where we're going to plant. I think it's going to be just up here. Maybe. Um, but I need to deal with these bandits now. So we're going to hire this. I'm going to stop them from running. And we are going to go take out... Where's the pesky bandit camp? There's one over there. One up there as well. So let's go deal with this one first. That should be more than enough anyway. Um, as long as we get ourselves a nice big hill, we'll take those out nice and easy. And we're making the silver in anyway. So the planks should start filling up in there as well. I don't know whether to open the trade routes yet or just hold on. I think I'm going to hold on money-wise for something slightly bigger. Because we're going to need something like spears. Yeah, I'll make the shields myself and then sell the spears i think uh sorry buy in the spears and then make the shields and sell the shields myself i'll show you a quick fighting tip in a moment as well when they come in look nice families digging in in the background as well which is good but yeah if we just brace along this hill right here i'll get them nice and spread out maybe let's go with a row of two they should come out and try and fight us well we're going to stand your ground and then once they break, so that gives them a defensive boost. So when they get hit, oh, I need to move over. Get surrounded by trees. There we go. So we'll do that. And then once they start fighting, we're going to go push forward. And then that should kill them without us losing. We lost one, but that's fine. Right, there we go. Perfect. We didn't have the height there, unfortunately. We're going to go rob the bandit camp, take that money into our regional wealth, I think. And that's going to be perfect. So we will need to take out what's his face to beat him as well so we're going to send resources to nearby town and get the riches for us and then we're going to bring our soldiers back and get cracking january is upon us i'm once again going to take a look at farming because i i want to do it yeah there so we can farm along this part here so this might be our farming zone cool we're only farm emma though i'll buy in beer and the church construction still happening still waiting on a bit of stone to go in and the first lot of veg is in as well. So we're going to have like a huge variety in our markets and stuff. We've all got vegetables in the houses too. Beautiful. And I'm going to set up a couple of houses ready. So we'll go with some bigger ones like so. A couple of businesses in there. So that should be good. As I say, the next marketplace is going to be somewhere around here, I think. But we're going to have to consider planting our trees soon. And I think I'm going to get that early. So we don't need to worry about it. So Forester's Hut... Let's get it smack bang next to it. And I'm actually going to set it up just over here. Somewhere where we can't build, right? Makes sense. There are plenty of families though. So let's uh, let's take a look at what we want to do here. Maybe the tannery now. Yep. Just to keep the leathers going. And then we'll need to consider another storehouse and granary. Which I might get in so we know they're there. And I don't forget. So we'll have a granary. Oh yeah, you can't do the granary yet. Let's do a storehouse over here. Maybe by the market works fine, actually. Let's put it opposite the market. And we'll kind of build around that with housing and a marketplace maybe over here. And then another one or two here. But this, like I say, is going to be a big farming area. It's going to be interesting to see what population we can hit off this, isn't it? That tanner has just made a new clothing store, which I'm not happy about. The marketplaces need a little bit of work. We don't need this. If I go over, we have enough from the one clothing store to be able to distribute to these. Because it's still got loads in. Um, but it's not happening. Uh, right. Where's my soldiers, actually? Let's disband those, and we should be able to recruit a couple more now. 18. We do need to go deal with that other bandit camp, too. But if you just look, we've got 414 now. So we're going to use that to actually open up some trade routes here. So we're going to establish the spears, and we're going to import one at a time. I'm going to be really sensible with that and just do it slowly to build our army up. We've got plenty of time before they attack anyway. And I think I'm going to try out the archers again. I know they're weak, but I'm going to get some in anyway. They're nice and easy to uh, sell and keep up. So and there we go. We can upgrade one of our burgage plots now. So I'm going to do the smaller ones first for our artisan stuff. This one here, I'm going to upgrade so we can afford the family. This is going to be the start of making the product. So as you can see, we've got 63 planks. I'm going to assign another one to the logging camp because they seem to be struggling a little bit. And then we're going to get the forester's hut going in a moment. 
And there's the forester's hut. So I'm going to sign one and we're going to say the work area is going to be out here. So I'm going to go with a nice zone right there. And that means it's decent walking distance for those. I'll keep that running just so I can keep on top of the logs. Happiness rating is fab though. So we should see two families coming in now with the church up. This is good. Might all change when we upgrade this though. Food requirements and clothing requirements will change. So we'll need a shoemaker as well. With some of the gold, we can consider getting a couple of businesses in, though, as well. So if we wanted to, a couple of these ones like this. We can go ahead and make our first goat shed to have a bit of a bit of an extra with that one. Maybe you as well. We'll get two goat sheds in. What have we got going on here? So it's the fuel that's running low. That's still ticking over nicely. Again, I don't want these in marketplaces, if I'm honest. So we're going to have to consider getting the storehouse upgraded. And a new bandit camp on our borders as well. So I think I'm going to go deal with that one. So we'll get these guys in and we'll send them over. Ideally, we want to fight them in their lands. So we don't need to clear up the bodies. But so like here. And there we go. Track their movement. The raiders are here. So in one year, the raiders will arrive. So I'm strategically moving them. So when they come out, we'll be fighting them in their lands. Like this. And then we can slow it down. Right, perfect. So we're going to line them here. That should be fine. Once they charge us, we're going to flip to the push forward. And we should be able to kill these nice and quick. And then boom. Push forward. There you go. You wipe them out so quick. It's a bit of a cheese, I'll be honest. But it's fine. One way of uh, taking out a nice early bandit camps as well. But plenty of families coming in. We're actually on 42 population already. And guys... That is going to be where we end the first one. So let me know your thoughts on this one as a series as well. I really appreciate it. Please do consider subscribing if you aren't already. And if you want to support my endeavors that little bit more, please do consider becoming a member on Patreon or of the channel. As always, guys, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.